Welcome to the Insatiable Lust for Life with Stephen North. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Insatiable Lust for Life. This is Stephen North, and I am joined here with Janine Keel. And what a glorious day it is to be alive on the greatest planet that has ever been created. Absolutely beautiful. What a marvelous time we are living in this world. I'm here with my spirit guide, Amy, as I can feel her presence sitting on my shoulder. Not physically sitting on my shoulder, but there is that sensation that she is nearby. And I'm sure that we are also joined with by Star and many, many other friends. That is how these conversations occur, because there's always information that comes through. Usually when we try and pick a topic, as we were just doing right now, be like, oh, we could talk about this, we could talk about this. But there is no point because it gets hijacked. It's just the way it is. It's life. But... What we've noticed around the world and what we're going to talk about in this episode really is about the changes that we have been witnessing in life, that the whole experiences of COVID, of the pandemic, is really bringing the incredible gifts in transformation. Janine Keel, I welcome you to the show and thank you for joining again. How are you? Hi, Stephen. I'm absolutely fantastic. Thank you. Short and sweet. (laughs) It sounds just like me. As (laughs) always. So one of the things that I wanted to share originally, and I'm sure that over the years and uh, you've noticed with how, especially with like these experiences that I have with this whole spherical thing that I knew two years ago, I had to move myself into a position where everything around me, I had essentially, once I had sensed every past life, every kind of everything associated with one person, I knew that in that moment, the whole task that was ahead of me was moving myself into a, into the center of a sphere where I could be comfortable with no matter which decision got made, whether a decision was made or not. That although there is potential here, potential there, potential over here, that I knew that it is I had to be prepared emotionally, physically, mentally, or whatever you want to call it, for this whole experience to be able to understand and accept an outcome irrelevant of what the outcome is. And recently this week, which funny enough, we're in Western Australia is in lockdown because of one case of COVID uh, at the moment, that what we saw, what the, and yes, yeah, they went to this seminar and the Senate masters were talking away and they were talking about how we are moving into this centre of a sphere. And that it's kind of like a bubble. And they explained that that's the whole purpose of what's been going on over the past few years, is that we've been moving, 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 and trying to get into this, in, into like the centre of a bubble. You can, if you start thinking about electronics or quantum, whatever, biology, cells, electrons, protons, neutrons, is that in the atom you have this, the nucleus and everything revolves around the nucleus. So no matter what is going on externally, of the nucleus, you are the nucleus and you're, in, you're still your peace, you're calm. So if we compare this to the COVID pandemic, when everything is chaotic, you're sitting there, peace, calm, and not allowing the external world, macro, micro. But one of the things that I've noticed is that there's this like overnight personality change within it was really, really interesting because once I made the decision myself that I want to go dancing, go to the nightclubs, DJ again, and start having fun and enjoying life and being in the music, that all of a sudden I changed. And I don't know how and I don't know why it happened. I don't know how it happened. All I know is that I'm getting messages today from people saying that they're seeing that they're able to see my soul, they can see me just in vibe, feeling vibrant, they can see me radiating. They they're seeing a completely different side. And what's even more interesting is something that was said when I was eighteen. I now this is very embarrassing. Actually, it's not. It's really cool, but 
when I was 18, I recently met with a friend. Now they're living in Queensland and they run floating tanks and they, she reached out to me and one thing led to another, whatever, whatever. And that's how she reached, found me on Facebook. And she goes to me, do you remember when you when we first met? And I went, no. And she goes to me, we were 18 or whatever, how old we were. It was before the days of Facebook, before the days of mobile. Oh, the mobile phones were still around maybe. It was around 97, 98, 99, somewhere around there. And she goes, we met up in the city, we walked around, and I'm sitting there going, I don't remember that. And there was something that I said. And I go to her, how do you think we're getting on? And she replies with, yeah, I think we're getting on all right. What do you reckon? And me, cheekishly replied with, wait for it, cheekishly replied with, I'm holding myself back from squeezing your ass to see if it's real or not. That's what I said in the most politest way. And I, my first response was, wasn't me. That's not me, I don't say those things. And then within a few moments, I thought of how much I lost myself over the years. That in that single sentence, there's fearlessness, there's confidence. In a roundabout way, there's chivalry because it's saying, I'm holding myself back, so I'm gonna be polite. But I'm going to vocalise my request to squeeze your ass because if you say yes, then I will. But if you say no, I'm not going to worry about it. But in that single moment, when she told me what I'd said, it made me think. And it was that conversation that sparked this change, this transition of reclaiming myself because when I was young, I was fearless. I would be very direct and very outspoken, very cheeky, very mischievous. I don't know how I got away with the things that I did, but at the same time, I also understand how I got away with the things that I did. And it was just an extraordinary experience to be reminded of how controlled I became after 99. How, because in 99 was when I met my ex-wife and I started the medication regime to try and be a better person and how I lost an, a whole aspect of who I was because of the medication regime. I went from being this fearless, fun-loving person to not care, giving a single shit what people were thinking of me. As long as I was having fun, that's all I cared for. I didn't know what they were thinking. I didn't care what they were thinking. There was conspiracy theories are going on about me that I didn't know. And was what was even more interesting was what she was saying is that no matter who she went to to ask where did Steve go, because I just disappeared from from every from from the whole groups and circles. And there was like, oh, he's been, he's gotten in trouble with the police. Oh, he's gone here. Oh, he's gone there. He's gone to uni. He's done. He's doing this. He's doing that. He's doing this. Like I completely disappeared because I decided to try and have a go studying to try and impress a girl. I went, and that was what's really funny. I went back to study electronic engineering, which is which is very critical to knowing the heart activation music to impress someone. I mean, really? How? Just how? <laughs> and it was in that moment, in this whole this series of thoughts, that I realised that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all as to who I am, what people think. And I believe that because of the frustration 
that we are all experiencing globally with lockdowns and pand- with this pandemic, that it has changed many people in the way that they are seeing life, that they are speaking out more, that they are more honest. I don't know. Maybe it was just me. Maybe it's others. I don't know. I've spoken enough. Your turn. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you're so good at dropping things on me, Stephen. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I mean, I can't compete with that, what you've just said. Um, because when I was younger, I was always like very shy and withdrawn. Um, and I suppose, I don't think I've mentioned this before, but I've been a people pleaser. And because of that, it is, I sort of always held myself back or, or never really just, um, I just didn't do things. I sort of postponed things. I hesitated to do things. The things that part of me really wanted to do, but I just didn't because I was so focused on everyone else. What, you know, helping other people um, to try and get that love and that attention and everything um, that I didn't feel I had in myself. I didn't realize at the time. But with this pandemic and recently discovering that the UK, where I where I reside, um, could become apop- apocalyptic, it just something just clicked. Something just sort of not snapped, but clicked inside to say, "Why are you postponing things? Why are you spending so much time?" bothering about other people. No, it's it's time for you to start investing in yourself. Time for you to do things what what you enjoy, what you brings you joy. And and one of the things that's really become so passionate is dancing. Absolutely want to dance. I mean, obviously this current time I'm not able to go out nightclubbing like Steven's been able to do. Um but I just, I just like want to dance at home. You know, I just, every day I want to just do some sort of movement, I want to dance just for the pure joy and passion because it just makes me feel so alive and like in the here and now. I'm not, not a dancer, um, but I just absolutely love dancing. And it's just, I don't know, it's just, it, it's just that, that opportunity to do it. No, no, I can, I'm well enough to do it because, like, tomorrow I could be struck down by COVID because it's that rife in the UK. And it just really brought that home to me, what truly is important to me, what is really important in my life. And I realised that it's all the passions and joys that I love. And I've always, as a child, I always wanted to dance. I always wanted to dance on the television. I had this, like, dream of doing that and... And they simply think, well, where's all of those things gone? You know, they've sort of been hidden from all, because of all this, like, so focused on external, so focused on other people. And that sort of just got hidden by everything. I suppose the same like yourself, Stephen, you know, things like life gets in the way, responsibilities, duties, and it just crushes the that, that life force the creativity, the the passions. And with COVID, it's like it's a reawakened something that had been hidden for so long. And and so for me it's it's yeah, it's just been a, a real awakening, eye opener to not waste a, a, any moment at all. Mo moaning, complaining, judging, uh, feeling sorry for myself. Because I you know, I, I just want to look at all the blessings in my life. And I've been like, sh- you know, thanking my parents for for giving me a roof over my head so that I can do the business that I do. And, you know, all these things I, I was taking for granted. And it's and, and I thank COVID, even though it's a lot of people suffering and dying from it. I'm, I'm very, very grateful because it's, it's brought home to me what is important was in and then not waste any moments in in doing in, in thinking negatively and 
feel, I say feeling sorry for myself. I just want to enjoy life as, as best I can under the very limited circumstances in the UK um, and share and try and share that with everyone. But not purposely sharing, but just be, be myself. Like yourself, like you, should even just being yourself is the best is the best way of of exuding that that love and that uh, energy and creativity and and passion that everybody starts starts picking up. You know, I mean, the conversations I've had with people just recently, connections I've, I've sort of um, reinstated, which because I, I haven't sort of connected the people for a while but I thought I want to make some extra efforts in connecting with people I haven't spoken to for a while and they've noticed that difference within myself you can see that and they've really enjoyed that the, the company because they can see that I'm not I'm just being myself so I'll pass it back to you now <laughs> <laughs> so that's really interesting because it was like Today was a bit of a bad news for my mum today, I'm worried. Like, I understand this whole frustration. I understand, like, we're in lockdown because of one case of COVID at the moment. And people are getting frustrated, absolutely frustrated. I'm, like, saying to my mum, like, yesterday, there was just arguments everywhere. I was avoiding talking to friends because it's just news, 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 stupid news. And it's gotten on my to the point that I don't care. I don't want to know anymore. If I die today, I die today. If I die tomorrow, I die tomorrow. I don't care anymore because it makes no sense. It's nonsensical to worry about the future because right now COVID is saying, well, you won't have it tomorrow if I get my hands on you or spores on you. And you know, some one of the stories you told me, which really left an impact, was how you know a parcel arrived, guy picks it up, wife dies of COVID. Yeah. No, it's like, what the heck? It's just so. And what I and also was saying to my mom, you know, she got the results back from you know the scans or whatever, and you know there's spots on the liver, which is not good because you know a bit of background is mum was diagnosed with breast cancer many years ago, went through the chemo treatments and everything, and apparently it was clear it was all cured. Three years later, it metastasized, if that's the right word, and then got into her bones. So now that the bone cancer has has been held, like it's kind of like gone backwards, but if it gets into the liver, that's it. And what was really interesting is that before she got home, in my little conversation with Amy, Amy was just saying that I want you to tell your mum how great, how grateful it is that she's around because of the little things that people do. Yeah. It was like, you know, because of sometimes when I have these organisational structure issues, like uh, cleaning my, my room, staying clean, I don't know how people can have a spotless clean desk. It's, uh, I think I like the Einstein, a cluttered desk is a sign of genius um, because my desk is cluttered, which is why you've got this virtual background. Um, <laughs> but, and I was saying to her, I said, when I get to a point that I, I can't function, or I'm struggling, I know to call my mom and she'll be like, okay, just do this, this and this and, and bring me back into a bit of a state, like situation, I don't even know what the words are, but like a, a focused state of organisation. Do this, do this, do this. And then I can get through. I remember one day, one weekend, I needed to clean my house and it took me the entire weekend. So then I just went, this, is taking my, this took my entire weekend. I'll get cleaners in and they do it in two hours. I had a little unit. They do in two hours what took me two days. I gave up. I quit because it was just easier and cheaper. <laughs> it took me two whole days. So, and I was saying it's not, I said if it wasn't for her, there wouldn't be food in the fridge. If it wasn't for her, the laundry wouldn't get done. If it wasn't for her, this wouldn't be done. If it wasn't for her, that wouldn't be done. 
if it wasn't for her <laughs> intervening when I was done for DUI, I may not be where I am right now, Mr. Stubborn. Um, and as I said to her, I said, I don't have a car. But these are the big things that she does is on the weekends, she'll spend time with dad and leave me the keys to the car so I can do whatever I want on the weekend. So I can have that freedom of being able to drive without having to worry or about public transport or anything. I have the freedom to use. So what I do with myself when I structure my day is that I do, I have appointments in the afternoon, in late in the afternoon and into the evenings. So because I know that when she wakes up, that's when she's got the most energy. So she goes and does her things in the morning. It kind of makes it all flexible. But if it wasn't for that, I'd be catching public transport or I'd be struggling more. And usually I wouldn't say those things, but today I did because Amy's saying, tell her a bunch of flowers won't offer the same level of gratitude. Yeah. And in this world of everything's not good enough, I'm trying to get those that are carrying on and frustrated and yelling to go, well, they're doing the best they can. Yes, they're making mistakes. Yes, that you've got your frustrations because, you know, you're you're being diagnosed with terminal cancer. You don't know how long you've got to live, but you're in lockdown. Where all you want to do is travel. Last year, in March, my mum was meant to be on a cruise ship in China. The only way she could get my dad on a cruise ship was because they were going onto accounting, onto accounting conference. But it was the only first time he, like, he was, he decided he wanted to go onto a cruise ship because he was a tax write-off, seminars, mm -hmm. conferencing, you know, whatever. But the fact that they were going to go overseas, experience, 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 experience. My mum's longing for experiences is getting so, so, so frustrated because you're in a lockdown, you're in isolation, you're in this, you're in that. I can understand the frustrations, but it seems to have an external blame on the government, on the way people are handling things, the way people are doing things, isn't really coming back to going, well, I'm frustrated because I feel that I know I'm having this experience of death and I want to have this experience of life, the whole, the dualistic nature of it. And I'm being told that I can't. And that's where it gets sad and frustrating. I know um, I can sort of empathise in the sense because like my dad was sort of saying he felt really lonely um, because he can't, he loves talking to people, you know, he loves, he loves socialising and everything. And he hasn't got cancer or anything like that, but he was saying to me the other day, oh, I feel really lonely um, because he, as I say, he loves, he loves to be with people, he loves to talk to people, have a good crack. And obviously with the COVID, can't do it, you know? It can only talk to me and my mum, you know? <laughs> so, and there's only so much <laughs> it's to we can give him, you know? <laughs> so yeah, it's it, it really is impacting people and, frust and making them frustrated. And he says, oh, it's all right for you. You can, you can, you can cope with it, you can deal with it. But I, you know, I do have my frustrations. I, I, I want to do be able to do more and go out more, and but I just, I just, I suppose I just have a different outlook, you know, um, because I realise that I suppose I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I am more insulin, and so I'm used to, to being indoors more and, and and not being so sociable. But I think um, after this, after this COVID, it's sort of. It has changed me because I want to do more. I want to go out more once this is over. And I do get frustrated because it's like most of the time I'm spending in the bedroom. So it's just like a, it can become a prison, you know? And because it's winter, 
we can't always go out because the weather's not so good. Um, so I thought, right, I'm buying myself body groove so I can do so dancing, different routines, um, exercise, r- rather than just be sitting at the desk, um, just do my work. And it's like, yeah, I want to, this, this energy just wants to come out in this way. Um, so that's, I thought, right, I'm not, like I said, I'm not postponing anything. So I just thought, I'm going to buy this and just treat myself, invest in myself, which, uh, like I say, I haven't done. I haven't done until just recently because I was taking things for granted or, or just being in a sort of this habit of doing the same old thing. And and COVID has said, well, you can do that, but you know, how much time have you got? And like you said, there's no future. There is no future, it's now. So why do I need to want to postpone things when all I have is now? Nothing ever really, nothing matters other than now. So stop postponing. Just go for the things you want to go for as best you can. And so I invested in this this uh, body groove, and it's been fantastic. And but then I still do my own dancing as well on top of that. And so you're saying that by the end of your lockdown which could be 2023, 644, <laughs> that you're going to be able to do break dancing. Maybe, yeah. You bop and well, move. I just <laughs> don't think my body allow me to do that, but yeah, it's be like, yeah, manifest it. <laughs> oh, yeah. So well, it's, well, it's really, what well, really has, it's, it's sort of made me realise, because I, Another thing that I haven't been really fantastic at is manifesting stuff and say, so like, I've realised I've just been drifting. Because I'm drifting. Yeah, because I'm drifting. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'd, it's just brought that home to me. So, thought, right, Janine, what do you want? What is it that you really want? Get clear on what you want. I know it's, I know it's like I say, we're not focusing on the future, but it's still, the future is made by now. You know, so what is it that you want? And that's another thing that came clear to me as well, that I, I need to focus on on the things that I want to do. Obviously, there's things I can do right now, but there's things that I perhaps want to bring into my life. If, you know, you know, I still have a future and I don't get struck down by COVID. So it's it's brought those things to to the fore, you know. You know that what's really interesting? So many, many years ago, A channel once said to me, and this is a very long time ago, the future isn't written. And it really got got me to think, because it surfaced again, right? If the future isn't written, we have plans. At the soul level, we have plans. But those plans don't necessarily happen because of the human free will and struggles and challenges that we face. But generally, things come into fruition for what the soul has planned. There is a very big difference between the soul plan and then the human that lives it. It has me very intrigued. But it was like, how can we have a life path? How can we have a purpose? How can we do all these things if the future isn't written? Because what really triggered this massive transformation for me, massive, massive, shook my entire world constantly every time, was one phrase. In regards to a relationship, a decision hasn't been made. Now, when I first had that experience, the first lot of transformations, It shook my entire world. In fact, that was actually why I was done for DUI, because I was so shocked by what was said. And I'm going, but what are you talking about a relationship? I'm loyal to my friend. I'm loyal and da, 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 da. Shook my entire world and was got blind drunk, tried to escape. Even to the point that I was inspired to pull over and have six more pints to get done for DUI. Like I was, I would have been fine if I drove home then and like at that time I was driving home and not, but I pulled over and had six more pints, you know, whatever. I don't drink anymore, but highlights. So 
And then it kept coming up, it kept coming up, it kept coming up. It was like a torment of prophecy. In regards to a relationship, a decision hasn't been made. I had no idea what they were referring to. Absolutely no idea. And then it comes up in a reading and Amy has said, oh, in regards to a relationship, a decision hasn't been made. And I'm like, oh, no, here we go again. But then when I stumbled, I literally stumbled into a potential two years ago. One bloody phone call, again, shook my entire world, which again led back to coming into the centre of the nucleus. But as I said, the future isn't written. If there's no future, and this is something that they said, the Ascended Master spoke about, and it just makes so much logical sense. I mean, really, it is so simple, so basic that I don't even know how we're not even think how we don't even think about this. Is that everyone's trying to fix the past to have a better future? And I'm and I remember having a one-to-one session with the masters, and I just said, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of being held as a prisoner to past life, parallel lives, all these different things, trying to bloody fix the past when I know I can incarnate on this planet for the whole only purpose is to experience life. Like experience life. And what this COVID is showing is bringing forward is that insatiable lust for life. Ha <laughs> ha, plug. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. true. You like... You saw me, how much fun I was having at that dance party, rave party, whatever you want to call it. It was just in the music and it was just having so much fun. I was on the front barrier, fist bumping, just going like this. And then we got put into lockdown the following day and I went, ah, five day recovery, here I come. (laughs) (laughs) And it's like, and I'm like, when's the next one? When's the next one? When's the next one? I want to go. I want to keep having this fun. I want amazing music. I want the music. And I want to enjoy it. And here you are saying you want the music. You want to enjoy it. You want to feel it. You want to dance. This insatiable lust for life is becoming a fire. It is becoming a yeah. spark. It's like fully disconnect from everything that's going on in the world because I'm seeing that with all these frustrations there is a trend and that is people are thirsting for life yeah your turn oh, that's what i've been feeling you know i mean what like you were saying about when you went to see the masters and we were talking about the sphere and um being in that bubble and that's something exactly how i've been feeling is i mean this bubble and everything else is just happening outside of it if you will and and I'm just sort of feeling in the moment not even though there's this threat you know that could take my life at any time I'm just I'm not feeling that I'm not feeling that fear I'm not feeling the the chaos experience the chaos it's just I'm in this like bubble and it's not like I've really made it it's just happening because I think it's because I've chosen to see life in a different way rather than it um, being forced into it as such. It's been like a, a choice um, to say, right, I'm going to enjoy my life. Even if it's, the, it's, it's still a very limited way of, of enjoying myself, I, I want to do it. And dancing is one thing I can do because it's free. I can do it, abs- I can do it more or less anywhere. You can dance on your but, bed. Yeah, well, Jump yeah. up and down. <laughs> you can practice your break dancing. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it, to me, it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter what you're doing, where you are. It's it's the attitude to life that makes all the difference. It isn't what you're doing. I could still be enjoying myself even if I do some housework because I could still be dancing. <laughs> you know, I put some headphones on, music while I'm cleaning or you know it's just choosing to be happy choosing to to laugh choosing I've just been feeling this like love coming it's just like in waves it's like just keep loving Janine just keep loving Janine just keep loving do not judge just love 
don't waste your time and anything else just love when i mean loving and, and i mean in that which doesn't have any hidden agendas or is there any expectations um you just you're just loving because you're choosing to do so that's how it just keep it just keeps coming to me so unexpectedly it's like just love janine love yourself love people love love life love the life force that is running through you and like the dancing is like that representation of that love for life because it's it's so like freeing you know you can dance and i don't mean any particular dance style dance steps routines it's just really spontaneous allowing that my body to move in the way it wants to not caring if it might look ridiculous to somebody else and they want to laugh at what I do because I am quite expressive but oh, it's really? just that joy yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> but yeah it's just that it just makes when I feel like really lethargic or whatever I think right oh I'll just go and do some dancing and I just start feeling alive again you know, I, I'm really fortunate I can do it because obviously some people can't do that because they're disabled or, you know, they've, they've got conditions. So again, I'm so blessed that I'm able to move my body in the way that I can. Yeah. It's just, and not, 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 not wasting that opportunity to do that. Not waiting till I have got some sort of illness, condition, to the, and they become like a bucket list or something. I want to do it now before it, any of those things happen. So yeah, it's just that that aliveness. That sounds really, really interesting. Sounds just watching you express. It's like I want to do it. I want to do it now. I want to do it. I want to do it now. I can't remember. Yeah. It's like the minions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know that. Fun little adventurous, mischievous enjoyment. Yeah. yeah. It's like the out. child's banana, the banana, child's, banana, banana, banana. The child's coming out, you know? It's bringing that child, like nature out. It's not like thinking about anything. It's not concerning itself about what other people think, like you said, or um, what, what would I look like, or, you know, concerning itself about appearance, or. Uh, judging it in any way or thinking oh well I bet uh, no I won't do that because I might do it really badly who cares who cares if I do my, my dancing really badly or whatever it doesn't matter it's about just doing it when I was at this dance go. party one of the things that I was seeing was people who they were trying to shuffle they kind of missed the definition of what shuffle is but they were more like stomping their feet and really just looked like he was stomping his feet. It was, but the guy was having so much fun and it was enjoying life that I'm like, you know what? This is what it's about. Yeah. I mean, I'm an expert at box step, two step, side to side. Like, even to the point that it, whilst it looks like I'm dancing, my feet aren't even moving at all. <laughs> because my type of dancing looks more like a rock into a boat into the into the ocean um but it doesn't really matter like everyone was just like it doesn't matter doing it like, their way it was really funny because and I, and I did laugh I laughed I laughed I laughed so hard there I was standing there doing my thing on the dance floor and some guy just falls into me and I look at him and I just look and the guy goes, I'm really, really sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm just staring at him goes, I was trying to have a shuffle, but I lost my balance and fell into you. <laughs> and, and then he was just kept going, you know, stomping his feet and everything and blah, blah, blah. At, when I was at a nightclub, there was someone who was, you know, had the whole, sh you know, the shuffler's outfits or whatever you see on Instagram or whatever, you know, the shoes, the the shorts, the, the bathers that they're wearing and everything. And 
it, she was she looked more like she was flailing around like you know whatever whatever that's me <laughs> but it was having so much fun and i just went you know what kudos because when i was a teenager i was doing the same thing the, me and this guy would be in the nightclub and we'll be like it's your turn to dance and he would and we'd be like, because he was, you know, he did ballroom dancing, so he would do all these moves. So we, I'd be like, yeah, shuffle, 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 drop down and move it around. And and then be like, oh, yeah, look at those moves. Your turn. Can you do better? And I was wearing the big, you know, the black pants with yellow boots so my, and, and a muscle shirt. And I was this little skinny run. And but it, we were just having fun and enjoying life and that movement and just being in the music. So when I was in the nightclub, there I was just like, yeah, yeah. Like I danced for three hours nonstop. I haven't stood on the scales to figure out how much weight I've lost. <laughs> but what I got to see was just this passion and how when the world is falling apart, you put a DJ and playing great music. You put a band and play great music. You put headphones on and play great music. Your reality has just changed. And it's just incredible. But going back to this sphere thing and this seminar, what was really, really, really interesting was that it was more validation for what I already knew and more of like a reference, like giving a few references to what I already knew. Because as a child growing up, I would always have this one vision. It would come around here from. It would come randomly, and I'd be like, the, "It first started out with a skateboard, and you come up to this. You, you come along, and you go to this crater, and you skateboard down this like meteorite impact. Like you could. I, I have no idea where it is, but the masters know they refer to it as my red earth. And I'd skateboard, and I'd be in this dome, this whole this dome, and I'd just be skateboarding around. My physical body would feel the movements as I'm laying in bed but I could feel the movement as I'm skateboarding down this down this thing. As I got older, it went from a skateboard to a BMX. It went from a BMX to a go-kart to then, and then it stopped. But then I'd be having these visions that moved from moving through this, the out, the external of this, of this dome to then being able to sit in the middle of it and float. Like there was this, just this piece of earth that was just like, similar. it was like a, a t- torus field. You know how it's got that curve, mm-hmm. and they'll be sitting in the middle of it. And then, and then over the years, it grew and grew, it changed, kept evolving. So it went from being this to this massive energetic dome over the top of it. And there is me sitting in this sphere. So when things got really, really intense last year all I knew I wanted to do was sit in the middle of the earth sit in this fear of white of this silvery white plasmatic pool just to be in the middle of it be into the middle of it be in the middle. so when 21 December came through what I was watching was people hooking in to the rea- into a different grid of reality like it was just there's the freedom that you're looking for in the center of the earth the earth is the answer the earth is taking care of you, you're not taking care of it. Mm-hmm. The earth is the earth is is the key to the ascension. The key the earth is the key to the awakening. The earth is not stationary, it's not gonna sit in one dimension. It too is going to move into a different dimension. So yeah. we're gonna ascend whether we're prepared or not, as the earth will move because the earth is having its own experience. Why does everyone think that the human is this only being with consciousness? So, but what I got to see was what I already knew. I just didn't know what it was. And that's what I found very interesting. You know how the story that when we did the 40th birthday and you did the picture of Adam and Eve as Amy and Steve and the corticus and our adventures in in our explorations in the corticus and everything. And it led me to the belief system that the creation of this planet is the greatest love story known. 
to me, of course, because it's my love story. Um, and <laughs> and that it is the great, it is the best of every system, so that I could share my memories, my all the experiences I've had all over the universe in one single place with Amy. That I can choose what experience you want in different lifetimes, whatever, whatever. I would like created this incredible, incredible creation. And do you know what the master said in this seminar? Come on. They turn around and said that the reason why the earth was created so that you can have a multitude of different experiences in one place. And I just went, you just validated my theory that it was a it is the greatest love story ever. Because that is exactly it. You can have every single experience from every single planetary system on this one planet. It can be a love story for everyone, yeah. not just one person. Yeah, that's what if it's we, meant to if be. If we open up to that, you know, if we allow ourselves, because gives ourselves permission to do that, and it's like a choice, a choice to to enjoy it's a choice to experience because once you let go of ideology and beliefs fixed the ideas past. the past then it you, you open up to those experiences well this is what i'm experiencing anyway personally it's just i think what it is when you're talking about the earth what came to me was, and I'm going referring back to dancing again, is that because if you look at the tribes, what do the tribes do? They dance, and it's like the drumming, the, the drumming. The, it's the they're celebrating life. They celebrate life. They might be very live very simple lives, but they got it. They know how to live life because. They are celebrating, they, they work, but then they come back and they dance and they sing in celebration and in, in gratitude to what they have, to life itself. And, and it's, it's just a, when you're talking about the earth, that's what it reminds me of. And then the dancing is about, when I dance, it's like it's really grounding. It grounds me. And it's when I hear like really deep drums, then I just, it's like this, I just feel so alive. And so I just want to fly. And, but yet at the same time, I'm feeling this like connection to the earth. Because that is like, the drum is like the heartbeat, that rhythm of the earth. So oh, I really? can understand why, I can understand why these tribes want to dance in the way that they do because they're really tapping into that rhythm of the earth and celebrating with the earth. They're not seeing themselves separate from it. Someone uh, has just planted a very mischievous thought in my head. Now you know where the tribes got the birdie dance from. No, 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 no. <laughs> Yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> I'm you're talking about the tribes like it's all the earth, and it's like, oh, now you know why they dance like the bird, they mimic the bird. No, 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 and I'm like, what? <laughs> all right, we have just lost connection with Janine in the middle of the birdie dance. As we are reaching to the end of the segment, we are going to end it here. This is Stephen North and with Janine Rose Keel tuning into the insatiable lust for life. Welcome to the insatiable lust for life with Stephen North.